What's up you guys, it's your girl Amber and today I'm gonna talk to you about how to give that good good, that great great head part two. And I know this video is a long time coming, but we're here. Now if you guys haven't seen the first video where I talk about the basics of this, make sure you click the link down below and go and watch that video first. I give you guys all the details for what you need to know up front to make sure that you're giving better head or even how to get started. Now in this video I'm going to give you guys the updated version of a lot of things because I've actually learned a lot of things since the first time I made this video. The first thing I want to talk about is love languages. I think that it's so good to know someone's love languages right away, right when you start dating them and especially before you get intimate because it's so good to know what makes them tick, what turns them on or what things that they might not like as much, right? For example, if someone is physical touch, then I know that in the intimate setting, I'm gonna be a little bit more hands-on with them, I'm gonna be a little bit more affectionate with them and touch them a little bit more because that's what turns them on. If they're a person that needs words of affirmation, I'm gonna make sure that I spend a good amount of time affirming and encouraging them by telling them they look beautiful or that they smell good or that they're so sexy. And I'm also gonna make sure that I spend time listening to them. If they're a person that loves quality time, I'm gonna make sure that I'm spending a good amount of time before I try to get into that intimate setting by having deep conversations with them or spending time with them, watching a movie with them, maybe playing a game, and you can even turn that into a sexual game. But we'll get into that. One thing that I think is good to know about you and your partner is what type of orgasmer are you? Are you a multi-orgasmer or are you a one and done? And I think this is really good to know because it's a good indication of how the night should be set up. For example, if one of the people are one and done and one person's a multi-orgasmer, but the one and done person has an orgasm early on and now they're turned off and now everything after that kind of feels like a chore because they already had their orgasm and now they probably just want to lay down and go to sleep. It kind of turns the night into something not that fun, right? So it's good to know because maybe you want the one and done person to get turned on and then the multi-orgasm person will get pleased and then you'll come back to the one and done person and then that's how you know the night will be set up and have a good time and make sure that both of you are pleased and not feeling like this was a chore at some point. So it's always good to know your partner. Setting the mood. I think of myself as really good at this, you guys, so let me help you as much as I can, okay? Now, however the night goes that you want to spend and make sure that you're just like pleasing that person, whether it's dinner or lounge or whatever, once you get to the intimate setting, let's say your house, you gotta set the mood right, okay? So one of the ways that I do this that really works for me is making sure that my house smells so good. Okay, I make sure my room smells good and the rest of the house smells good by using essential oils. I have an oil diffuser and I use specific scents that turn people on or relaxes people or just causes them to be happy and that really works for me. Or I'll set out a bunch of different candles that make it really sexy and intimate vibe going on in here. I think that works really well as well. I have different lighting that I change throughout the house that I think that also really helps set the mood. And the other thing is have a a good mood playlist. It's always good to be playing really nice music, keep it on low, and you know, vibe out, baby. Once you kind of set that mood, sit somewhere comfortable, whether it's on a bed or a couch or a chair together, and then start getting intimate. Little hand holding, touching, kissing, and massages. If you guys wanna know what works for me, it's massages, okay? Whether it's their hands or their back, it turns people on, it relaxes them, and majority of the time, they start losing clothes. Now let me throw a couple tips out there for some of the people that have been together for a long time, okay? You gotta switch it up from your normal routine. You guys cannot keep doing the same thing over and over. Surprise them, surprise yourself. Try something completely different than you guys have tried before and that really helps spice things up. The other thing is, if you're a person that doesn't get pleased by turning other people on, find ways to make it work for you so that you're also getting turned on. Whether it be having a vibrator on yourself while you're doing something for them or switching up positions where it feels good for you as well so that you feel good about doing the things that you're doing to help please them. If you need help in your mind, start remembering the things that you like or love or that you appreciate about that person and that will help encourage you as you're going throughout the night. Now we're about to get to the good stuff. Are you guys ready? Are you ready? I'm gonna talk to you guys about the erogenous zones. I think I said that right. 
erogenous zones. Most people know only about a couple of the different spots, like the C spot, the clit, which is the most sensitive spot on a woman. The clit is queen. Okay, you wanna stimulate the clit and you wanna do the best that you can with that because that's where majority of orgasms come from. The other spot that other people may know of is the G spot, okay? Which is a nice little texture, one to three inches on the interior wall, usually on the top side, right? I talk about this in the first video, but I'm gonna reference this a couple times because that's how you're gonna find the other spots, okay? So, C spot, G spot, A spot. I know you guys have probably not heard of the A spot, but the A spot is good. People like the A spot, all right? So if you know where the G spot is, the A spot is two inches deeper than the G spot. And it feels like you're going into a little tunnel and there's like a little kind of ribbed area over there too. So whether you use your fingers or something else, sometimes people like a good amount of pressure here, but you wanna check in with your partner because it varies between everybody, but that is a good spot, you guys. The O spot. Not a lot of people know about the O spot either. So so let me tell you how to find this. If you've located the G spot, you switch and go on the opposite wall towards the back on her vagina wall and usually it feels like a spongy area. And this area actually stimulates the nerves in her anal glands. So it's a whole different feeling, a whole different vibe. So check in with them to see what they like and what kind of pressure or just touching or rubbing that they like with this. Anal stimulation. Now, this is one thing that I've learned a lot about the last couple years because people love anal stimulation and they like it in different ways. More than just the normal thing that you hear, eating it like groceries, which involves licking of some sorts. So check in with your partner because some people love rubbing, touching, penetration, or licking to that area to turn them on. Nipples. I did not talk about this, but I, you know, probably because I think this is an obvious, but nipples are a very huge stimulant to people. Some people love to be rubbed, touched, even squeezed or licked or sucked and things like that. So check in with your partner to see what turns them on because that is a huge zone you cannot forget. It will turn your partner on so much. All right, men, I didn't forget about y'all, okay? Besides your whole peen in general, the pee spot. Now the pee spot is their prostate, which is a walnut sized gland that turns them on. So make sure you guys are stroking that area or doing whatever that they like because that is a big turn on for them. Okay, you guys, so that's all the spots that I have for you, but guess what? Do those in combination however you can and that's what takes you from doing good to doing the greatest ever. Combination, Yo, okay? So a lot of times when I'm going down and I'm giving head, I'm also doing a little bit of penetration either to the G spot or to the A spot as things start to heat up. And I change up my motion depending on how they're feeling and I'm reacting to them. So if I'm going fast with my tongue, I might be slower with my penetration, then I might speed up, or my penetration strokes might be a little bit, you know, slower or faster or harder depending on what I'm getting from them. So make sure you check in with your partner because everyone varies, but if you put a lot of these things together, it takes you from good to great, okay? So while you're going down and giving great clip pleasure with your mouth, you can use your fingers for G spot, O spot, A spot, or anal. You get what I'm saying? And pleasing them at the same time, which is always amazing. So just make sure that you're checking in with your partner after sex and seeing what they like and dislike so that you can switch it up and tweak some things for the future. Sometimes people don't like to talk right after sex, but it's good to find out these things after. And then it's also good to find out, do they like to cuddle after? Do they like to be alone after? Ask those questions as well. So if you guys have any questions for me, make sure you put them in the comments below and make sure you check out a link that I put down there for you it's omgyes.com so you can figure out what type of orgasm or that you are and you can figure out what makes the women's body tick it's a beautiful website and I'm sure there's other ones too so make sure you guys are putting those in the comments below so you can help out your friends that are also watching this video all right you guys I hope this helped I hope you enjoyed it I love you so much I'll see you soon with some more topics stay amazing stay proud and stay woke Peace. And stay safe too. If you're out there with, you know, sexually wise, stay safe. Make sure you're getting your pleasure and you're pleasing your partner because that's how you can also make sure you stay safe. Okay? Love you guys.